uh, quarterback Tim Tebow. Let me tell you why this is interesting. Is <laughs> is both defenses are great. You could even argue that this defense is better. But which quarterback is staking his claim, regardless of how they can throw the ball? Um, for the moment, I'm going to say that Tebow got more support on offense, but I think he had more to do with the success of his offense as well because it was built around him. Um, I don't know. Chris, does that make sense to you? I'm kind of weighing that theory in my head. I still don't know what to think. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, with with Osweiler going in there, you know, he, he has more more weapons on the offense. They got a little, a little more established running game than when Tebow was there. Um, defensively, you know, they they were pretty good then. I mean, they did add a couple pieces here. They did lose some as well. They lost Dumerville when Tebow was there, but then they also picked up uh, Ware um, there at uh, in, for Denver. So, yeah, I'd say Brock Weiser, the team's a little more built to, um, around than it was with Tebow. Okay, so so you're saying that Osweiler is actually getting more support than Tebow did. Okay, I, I I take that as a as you crediting Tebow more than anything else. So there you go. Well, T- Tebow is mostly mostly the offense is um, there, and then with Osweiler and everything, I mean, you know. Everyone knows who uh, Demaryius Thomas is now because of what Tebow was. <laughs> that game that he took our um, the Steelers' corner. Yeah, where they won the playoff game. That would be uh, the corner would be Ike Taylor, I believe. Boom. Right. I mean, with Tebow, they had it, um, Eric Decker there, but I mean, they're still filling, they're filling in with Emmanuel Sanders now. So I mean, yeah, they lose a player, but they put another player in the, in place for that. So interesting concept, my friend. Interesting concept. Another interesting concept, a team that's getting particularly hot in the AFC West. And, of course, I refer to the Kansas City Chiefs as they went to the black hole known as Oakland to play against. (coughs) Sorry, I had something in my throat. The Oakland Raiders. Um, You know, uh, we talk about DC4 and how good he's been this year. Well, unfortunately for the Raiders... He had probably his worst game of the year. Yeah, he went 31 for 48, 283 yards, two touchdowns, had three interceptions. Kansas City Chiefs defense looking like the defense we expect them to with pro bowlers at all three levels. And look, if you turn the ball over like that, including a pick six, by the way, you ain't going to win the game. Uh, On top of the defensive performance, the Chiefs, Alex Smith had two touchdowns passing and a running touchdown. Spencer Ware on the ground had a touchdown. Seven carries for 26 yards himself. Nine carries for 35 yards from Charkandrick West. Look, guys, Jamal who? That's the question you're asking. Jer- J- Jeremy Macklin had some uh, some touchdown love. Receivers catching touchdowns. What the bleep is this? Nine for 95 on the day was Macklin. Um, he did have a fumble, so did Travis Kelsey. But at the end of the day, KC might have had two turnovers. The Raiders had three, including a pick six. And you just can't have that. You just can't have that that much of a turnover, uh, especially in a divisional game like this. This means that the Chiefs have won six straight, I believe, charging and 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 trailing the Pittsburgh Steelers in the standings. We'll get to them a little bit later. <clears throat> but another team that's in the standings for the NFC, we've been talking about frauds and fake and and guys i gotta tell you in 2015 it doesn't get any more fake than the atlanta falcons and prove positive that as of this past sunday your tampa bay buccaneers have swept the atlanta falcons this game was 23 19 guys uh i don't know how much plastic surgery that the falcons have had but it's more than i can factor because it's just all fake everything is fake Fake, fake, fake. The Falcons are fake. They're nothing but a bunch of dirty birds. See what I did there? <laughs> Matt Ryan going 30 for 45. 269 yards. <laughs> All right. With a touchdown and an interception. Jameis Winston, 18 for 27. 227 yards with a touchdown and an interception of his own. The difference for my money, though, guys, on the ground, Devontae Freeman had 14 carries for 47 yards. But Doug Martin, 25 or 95, that shows me balanced offense. That shows me the difference in this game. Sure, the red zone was a factor as the Falcons were one for three, while the Bucks were three 
for four. They got to the red zone. They put it in the end zone. That's how you win football games, you know. And I think we're going to have an antithesis to that in the upcoming game. I know Chris will talk about it. But before we do, pop quiz. Has Jameis Winston played his way into the discussion for Rookie of the Year? Weasel. Yeah, most definitely. Okay. Uh, one, I think uh, Todd Gurley was, uh, yeah, I, I would say he was the front runner um, ever since he came back from the I ACL believe, injury. I, I think it was he like, got your midseason award even. Yeah, uh, week, I believe it was like week four or so he came back and he was doing great. Now, Averaging 120 or 30 yards or something for his first four games, I believe. Yep, and lately it's just, I think it's... Uh, it's more like 40. Mm, just something like that. It's yeah. uh but uh uh it's kind of like a cliche but uh the veteran players they already said that, you know, Jameson James Winston is our leader and he says he does everything right and He knows how to win. And uh yeah. I mean they're pretty much what they they were the literally the la- the worst team in the NFL last year and this year um they're actually contending, so oh, not well, bad at all. At the very least I, I would put dark horse status on them. Uh, Chris, Jameis Winston, Rookie of the Year conversation, yay or nay? Uh, I I think he should be in the conversation and winning. I'm not sure um, because really there's not many too many um, rookies doing all that great. I mean, you got Amari Cooper at the Raiders. He's been, he's been kind of quiet the last few weeks as well. Um, Winston, yeah, the, he was had up and downs early in the year. As you know, before the bye, after the bye, he came back. You know, I think he threw like he went for four games without an interception. Um, I mean, he is getting help from the running game there in Tampa, so he, he is getting help. But in the conversation, yeah, you need to include him because of what you know how many wins the Bucks have now compared to what they had last year. Yeah, I, I think that's a decent take, and I'll say this much: if the Bucks. I'm going I, I, I to say it right here on the air. I'm going to declare it, and I don't care if Amari Cooper has a 300-yard game receiving. If the Bucks make it to the playoffs, Jameis Winston's my rookie of the year. Not a middle ground there. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of obvious. Shot it. <laughs> um, but the reason why that won't happen is because I don't know if you've looked at the rest of the Seattle Seahawks schedule, but it ain't tough. That's going to be 3-0 and and keeping them a game ahead of the Bucks, who are currently 6-6 six and six versus the Seahawks, 7-5. and five. And, oh, by the way, I think somewhere in there they have to play the Panthers again. No, they play the Saints next week. At any rate, not the point. <clears throat> what is the point is the Battle of New York. No, I'm not talking about the Avengers. I'm talking about East Rutherford. I'm talking about our good friend Chris Rankin being in a moral dilemma about who to cheer for. And take us there. Jets, Giants, Chris. They're in the battle against the best New York team that plays in New Jersey. The Jets beat the Giants in every time, 23-20. to 20. The Giants were down 3 nothing at one point when they started putting things together after a Dwayne Harris punt return for a touchdown. The Giants scored 20 points in the second quarter. It looked like they were going to run away with the game, but once again they fell apart in the fourth quarter because it's as many points as they scored there. Um... The Jets came back and tied it, and in overtime, the Jets kicked the field goal. The Giants' field goal attempt to extend overtime went wide left, and then Jets improved to a 7-5, and five. and their playoff hopes continue as the Giants are dropped for a triple feature 5-7. The Giants had this game won, an Eli interception in the red zone, and then going for it on a fourth and goal when you're up by 10 instead of kicking a field goal is what cost the Giants the game. That was really good. Eli finished, Eli finished 18 for 34 for 297 yards with a touchdown and an interception. Odell Beckham Jr. had six catches for 149 and a touchdown and tight end. Will Ty had 70 yards receiving. For the Jets, Ryan Fitzpatrick was 36 for 50, 72% for 390 yards, two touchdowns. Brandon Marshall had 131 yards on 12 catches and the game-tying touchdown. Eric Decker had eight for 101. And Bilal Powell had eight for 91 and a touchdown, but lost a fumble that led to a giant field goal. Yeah, I can't help but think that that's got to be possibly the best game that Fitzpatrick has ever had as a starter. And all that because somebody punched Geno in the face. I, I, it's Todd Bowles for president, folks. All right, I'm just saying that right now. He'll get there. Hey, go ahead, Chris. 
on the year that they've lost, that they had the lead going into the last two minutes. They've actually had the lead. They've lost four of the games when they've had a lead um, with one minute left in the game. They still lost. So, so they technically, I mean, they could have been nine and three. Mm-hmm. You know, if you had those four games in there, they could be nine and three right now looking at playoffs. Something tells me you're not talking about the Jets there. Let, let me let me go to it because because we've kind of talked about this a little bit with with Coughlin and, and some of the late decisions. Um, I know we had a big debate when they were playing the Patriots. Personally, I didn't have a problem with that one. But I was texting with friends of the show and, and fellow Giants fan, EJ Christian, um, who basically didn't have a problem with the aggressive decision by Tom Coughlin. Um uh, you know, you have you end up putting the Jets deep in their own territory. You don't expect Fitzpatrick to necessarily beat you. You have the momentum on your side at the particular time. What was it about the call that 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 you didn't like for the field goal, or uh, sorry, to go for it instead of taking the field goal? Yeah, no, you you got to take the points. So at that point in the game, you're up by ten. Just take the points because, I mean, really, if you look for the last couple of weeks, the games that the Jets have lost, and they've been down trying to come with a comeback, they're trying to go for it on fourth down instead of kicking field goals. Um, you, you got a better chance. You just got to take the points at that point instead of trying to go for go for it on fourth down. So when, when you were watching the game and you saw them line up to go for it on fourth, were you yelling at the TV at that point already? Yeah, I was. Okay, so there you go. It's not hindsight. He said it sucked then, too. <laughs> About how really, I mean, these, these stupid plays right now, I mean, I know a lot of Giants fans are getting fed up with Coughlin and they've had in the past. I mean, you always have them on the hot seat because it is New York. But, I mean, really, these couple of games, I mean, you've lost them in the fourth quarter, like the last two minutes of the game. Yeah. You're losing these games because of what you do before then. And I, I, I think at the end of the year, he's going to be gone. Weasel. Um, about how much time was the uh... – was the play where they went for it on fourth down instead of taking the field goal? About eight minutes. So I think what it, what it came down to is that you have, if you get a touchdown or you get a field goal, any way you look at it, you it's a it changes from a two-possession game to a one-possession game. Mm-hmm. One, right when they missed that, uh, the, the fourth down, they didn't convert it, you're sitting there. For the rest of the game, you have two possessions that you still need to get two scores. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing I didn't like about it the most was the amount of time left on the clock. If it was four minutes, I'm good with it. If it's six minutes, eh, I could go either way. Eight minutes is just too much football. Um, I, I I wasn't watching the game. I could be accused of hindsight here possibly, but I'll say this, and I've said it before on several games, you take the bleeping points, especially when you consider, and I'm surprised Chris didn't cite this, especially when you consider how bad the Giants have been in the red zone all year. Coughlin's got to know that. I don't know. That's just where I sit. All right, but then also flip, flipping over to the Jets, uh, the wide receiver duo of Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker. you think it's one of the best duos in the league? I do. It's one of the best duos in the league, and I think there's only one better. Weasel, who am I talking about? You're talking about, uh, well, my... Maybe uh, Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant. Not maybe, definitely. Wait, well, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Let's say it again. You, you cut out who? The Arizona Cardinals. Oh, with the Cardinals. With uh, what Brown? Well, actually, they don't even have a duo. They have like a triple threat. I mean, yeah, they have a better core. I think they're top two. If you take just the top two versus the top two, I would still take the Steelers top two. Well, hell, Wheaton's not bad either. And then I got Heath Miller. I don't know. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Because was like, hmm, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> it. It's a compelling argument. I just, gosh, that's that's tough for me to take the Cardinals there. Huh. Interesting conversation. Because, I, mean, I mean, really, you got Josh, you got Josh Brown, Michael Floyd, and... Um, Fitz, Fitz, uh, Gerald. Fitz, Fitz Gerald. Yeah, I almost did it too. I almost said Fitzpatrick too. I can't, play, I can't blame you. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. Let Weasel talk about Colt. If you're done, let's let Weasel talk about Colt Steelers and see if you still feel the same way. Weasel. The Steelers at home had a slow start with their offense, but then it started clicking as the Steelers <laughs> crushed the Colts 45-10. to 10. Wait, wait. 
Only 45 to 10? You call that clicking? I call that sucking. They're fire. <laughs> yep. So, after...